Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Get Tech Smart. I am your host Flo Nicholas, a local Hudson, New Hampshire resident, passionate about technology. I'm also a lawyer and a founder of tech startup company Cheap Cheap. So I'm really excited. I'm listening. I'm always excited for every show because what I'm really doing is making sure I'm bringing fantastic guests and we're going to really dig deep into areas of technology that are really important. And today I am like really surprised who's sitting next to me. Uh, and he's the head of the computer science program at Manchester Computer Community College. Uh, and he has very impressive background, computer uh, science forensic expert. You know, I think I probably should have him break down his credentials for you because it probably is going to sound way better coming from him than it is from me. But today we're going to talk about the Manchester Community College courses that are currently available and why it should really be important for us to pay attention to what's happening in the cybersecurity world, in the computer science world, as well as in the cloud services IT world. So welcome today, Peter LaMonica. It is such a pleasure to have you. You know, I was going to go deep in and just really talk about your background, but I think it sounds better when it comes from you because you have quite an impressive background. Well, thank you. Um, I started out in I started out in computer science, uh, but I transitioned into IT. I did IT for a number of years, and then into law enforcement. I was not a sworn agent, but I worked w uh, with sworn agents, and I did the forensics work. Uh, I worked for the lab. Our lab was in Dulles, Virginia, but uh, my office was up here in Boston. That, that is fantastic. Now, how did you end up at Manchester Community College? Well, there was a transition that took over, and they really wanted me to come down to the lab and work down in the lab. But I really didn't want to move to Dulles. So I decided, well, I was eligible to retire. I would retire. The college made me an offer for a uh, position there. And I just took that position. That was supposed to be my retirement job. Right. Uh, uh, my plan wasn't to be the department chair or yeah. started to create programs, but that's where it went. Right. So you're the, the head of the computer science program over yeah. there. And right now there's a lot going on, especially yes, in the computer, computer science program. So let's kind of dig a little deeper into that, because right now there is a pro programming and innovation in computer science mm -hmm. program. Right. What, what is that? And I guess what's the breakdown? What does it entail? Well, we started out when I got there, it was a, just a computer science program. And it started to drift a little bit to software engineering. Uh, we decided that we wanted that to become more innovative, to have students programming on the new technologies. We all knew that things were going to be changing, uh, even when we started that program. Uh, when 4G came out, we knew that new devices would come out. Now 5G is going to come out. There's going to be more new devices. Everything's going to have some kind of communications chip in it. Yeah. Students need to be programming in that area. You know, we're talking about heads-up displays. Now you've seen it all on television where they're just doing this. And that's the kind of thing that we want our students to be programming. Yeah, and you mentioned something that's happening like every day, right? Technology is constantly yeah. evolving. Right. Um, how difficult is it to keep up with the course programs? Like how do you manage adapting the courses with the uh, technology that keeps adapting as well? Well, we keep changing our programs all the time. But being a community college, it's, it's a lot easier. Uh, it takes me six months to change things. And we talk about cloud, that program has changed uh, just over the last year. So we keep changing what we're teaching in the programs to make students, to give students what's new. So we're teaching them how to program little robot things. Uh, that's, and that's what they're going to program. Think about how all that's working. Where students, you know, where people now are like climbing telephone poles or going underground and doing, I mean, we'll be doing that with robots. Yeah. Uh, so we need to l teach our students how to program those things. And that's where we're headed. And are there any notable projects that your students have worked on um, that you were able to mention at all? Well, we've have our, had our students uh, create uh, some, uh, some visual things uh, in, in that we haven't published them. 
uh, out into the public, but things where it makes it easier for students and professors to use the data that we're getting. Uh, mm -hmm. We had our students, along with the, uh, the welding group, create a touch screen uh, board for the main hall where they can type in the number of their class and it, oh, wow. it, it shows them, it brings up a map of, and, and directions uh, so that the students can get to their classrooms. Quicker and easy, that, that's, that's yeah. awesome. And is that technology that, is there, is there anything that you can actually uh, copyright or trademark and, and it's Well, really it's the... just software. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're using some of the new technology to create uh, that touch screen that we're using isn't a touch screen monitor. It's a television set with a touch screen sensor around it. Oh, wow. So we're, you know, that's the kind of technology that we're going out to grab so that students can see that, touch it, and do something with it. Now, during the course of the program, do the, the students actually get to go to companies and actually do like hands-on work, like an internship? Um, is there anything set up for that? We would like to have our students go out and do internships, but Getting an internship uh, is, is not as easy as it sounds. Now, we are going to be moving a little bit farther ahead in that. Uh, one of the things that we've done at Manchester is uh, we, are, um, we are now sponsors of all things IT and apprenticeships, and that's going to help. Now, the apprenticeship program starts at 16, so high school students can get into that. Uh, but our students also can get into that too. And as we get these, em these employers signed up for that program, a lot of uh, those employers would be taking our interns. So it sounds like there's probably a really good case to argue for uh, some type of um, collaboration yes. with uh, high schools, yes. uh, as well as collaboration with other tech companies uh, right here in New Hampshire. So if you guys are listening, uh, please pay attention. Um, you know, and you know, it, right now there's like a labor shortage, especially yes. in the tech sector. And this is a great time to look at uh, colleges like Manchester Community College and team up and collaborate and get some of those students in there because those mm -hmm. students uh, could then potentially be uh, a future yeah. Uh, yes. employee. Yeah, and we have some really great students. And one of the, some of the things that we do is, besides the apprenticeship program, we run a code camp. Uh, well, we don't run it. We sponsor the. We are our sponsors of the code camp. And they come on campus during the summer, mm -hmm. uh, and, to, and it's just a bunch of programmers, and they all come in, uh, and there's all different topics that go on, and that'll happen during the summer up at Manchester. Um, we also bring st uh, employers in in the cybersecurity area. We have a cybersecurity conference every year. So we're doing all these things on campus to bring in uh, employers so that they can meet our students. Right, and that's fantastic. And I'll be sure to make sure I put up. Do you have one coming up this summer? Uh, I do have, we have some code camps. Yeah. Okay, so we'll make sure we, we put the dates for that. So anyone who's interested in coding. Mm -hmm. Now we spoke a little bit about coding uh, before we started recording. Because uh, I see right now a huge push, even in the elementary level, mm -hmm. uh, for kids to start learning coding. Uh, do you think that is something that we, we should really start seeing as something that's embedded in curriculums, um, starting, I don't know, even elementary school? Yeah, uh, I do. And a lot of schools will throw their, they have programming classes, and students just jump right into the programming classes. Yeah. And when we get them, we have to back up a little bit, because one of the things that are being skipped in the high schools is the logic piece and the, the math piece and how all of that works. Um, you know, so students really have trouble with memory when they come to us and how they allocate memory and, and write really clean and, and secure programs. The problem is, if you want to throw a high school student into that, that's not what they want to do. They want to jump right in and start programming. Right. <laughs> you want to, they want uh, to so <laughs> it's, it's a little difficult. But, you know, but we can step, take that, make that backward step just a little bit. So our first semester is there's uh, two classes that our students take. Uh, one is all about just uh, how algorithms work and how the numbering systems work. And then uh, the second class is about, uh, it's more drag and drop kind of programming to teach more logic. No, that's fantastic. Yeah, your curriculum is, is really quite in depth. I see some algebra on there, so mm -hmm. some trigonometry, uh, which that word scares yeah. me. <laughs> a lot of math in programming. Yes, yeah, so there's yeah. a lot of math. So. If you're not someone who is really great in math, like I'm great at calculating percentages at clearance uh, sales, uh, <laughs> but coding uh, can seem to be quite scary for mm -hmm. people who are kind of scared of math. So how do you 
How do you kind of put people like me at ease when, when it comes to that? Well, you know, I get a lot of students will come in and they'll tell me right away, well, I want to do computer science. And my, one of the first questions I'm going to ask is, well, how's your math? Right. And then they tell me, well, not so good. Uh, and I'm like, well, maybe that's not what you right. want. <laughs> Let's talk about what it is, what, you're, what do you like to do? Uh, and some of them, yeah, absolutely, coding is where they want to go. Some right. of them, their math skills are great. Uh, but some of them are like, well, no, I want to do <laughs> something else. Right. We'll find something for you. you know, no, there's a perfect. lot of departments up there. Yeah, you know, not only mine, you know, and of course, you know, I think of mine are the best, but um, we've got the cloud program, we've got the, the cyber program. Well, we have these. If you want to work with computers, we have these. We also have advanced manufacturing, uh, which is a really great program. Uh, we've got you know, business and all these other programs that students can get into. Just because somebody told them coding is really good and you can make a lot of money there. Right. But you're not going to make a lot of money if you don't like what you're doing. Exactly. There's got to be a passion for that. Yes. And, and tech is so big. I, I have a lot of people who contact me. One of my platforms on LinkedIn is to, to, to really be an advocate for technology. I call myself a tech ambassador. And I get a, a lot of emails uh, from people across the world asking me, well, how can I get into tech? Mm -hmm. And I have to kind of say, okay. <laughs> What are you interested in? Exactly. That's what I say. That's exactly what I say. I say, well, first you got to figure out which sector. Because mm -hmm. saying I want to get into tech, I mean, well, that's, that's yeah. you know, that's they're so, huge. that's huge. huge. So you got to narrow it down. That's number one. And, and you got to pick it based on not like the numbers that we're seeing, right? Cause, because I think one of the things that's happening is the, the, the high numbers of demands mm -hmm. and the shortages are, are driving the competition for companies to fight over uh, you know, tech talent, yeah. and that's driving up some of those salaries. Um, so don't look at it just because of the salary, but you definitely want to look at it because of the passion. You yeah. got to be passionate about that. Uh, well, I got a lot of students, not a lot. Why well, we have some students that come to us and say, well, I want to do gaming. Well, we don't do, we don't have a gaming program, but everything we do is, it's kind of using the same platforms. Uh, we have um, our students using AR and VR yeah. on campus uh, as part of, are teaching and that's how we teach them. So it, that's all part of this. And you know, if you think about heads up displays and you know, and the immersive things, you know, where you know people are wearing the AR glasses and the yeah. VR glasses, that's that's all based in in the gaming platforms. Uh, so even if you know we don't, we're not going to create um, you know the, the the graphics, the animations, but we still use that technology. Yeah, and you bring up something really good because I actually had it written down that you know you, you're one of the programs that you're you're doing right now is using the VR glasses, mm -hmm. uh, virtual reality. I think for investigating crime scenes yes, and yeah. other various things. Yeah. Now that is something that we're really seeing a big push. I think mm -hmm. COVID has really kind of increased the demand um, where you know people are now working remotely, but you now instead of just having the virtual Zoom meeting or using yeah. the Microsoft. Uh, Outlook uh, meetings. Now you can actually put on your VR glasses, uh, pick an avatar, and actually have a meeting mm -hmm. with your teammates. Yes. Um, that is, that is you know, like and, and fantastic. It's, it's, it's interesting because when COVID came, we were already we already had 360 degree cameras in our labs, uh, what that in our classrooms, uh, and we were already recording our classes. And we were already storing them places for the students to, to watch so that if a student couldn't come to class, they could watch it. Or if they wanted to just watch it later. Yeah. And then when COVID came and everybody moved there, well, we were already there. We were already doing it. So it was really easy for us to make that move. So now we yeah. have to go that much farther ahead because we need to be farther ahead right. than everybody. <laughs> I think we, we've definitely seen a, a huge distinction between those who were ready and, and those who had to jump and get ready. Um, so that's really get great that you're, you're motivated to make sure that you stay a, ahead of the curve when it comes to technology. So one of the things we, we discussed uh, as well uh, earlier, you mentioned about uh, cloud, I, cloud IT oh. services. So can we talk a little bit more about that? Because sure. We're seeing also, again, because of hybrid and, and remote work mm -hmm. environments, the, the push to use cloud services. So what does that even mean for the average person? Well, one of the things that we saw up front was that no one really understood the cloud, even the people who were working there. Uh, people would, off, would push things off to go work in the cloud. And the cloud is just someone else's computer. It's right. nothing fancy. It's not... There's no magic going on there. 
Uh, it's just somebody else's computer somewhere else. So we're using these computers somewhere else, but who's responsible for what? Yeah. You know, if something fails, well, there was a lot of finger pointing going on. So that was one of the reasons that we created that program in the first place. So we created that program three or four years ago. Uh, things have started to change a little bit. Uh, we were very heavy into Linux and Microsoft servers, and that's where, you know, that was really our emphasis, but we're now moving to AWS. Uh, so we now have Amazon Web Services in that mix too, and that, those classes will start this fall. And do you see uh, an increase in, in students that are coming in and they're, they're looking at uh, that program and doing coursework in, in cloud IT services? Yeah, that's a, it's a new and growing program. It's not yeah. that old yet, but yeah, we are seeing more and more students coming into that field. Yeah, and I think this brings back to what we were saying earlier is, is really for companies uh, who are looking uh, to be more proficient and more knowledgeable of uh, cloud yeah. IT services, this is a great time to collaborate with Manchester Community College. Yeah, and as I said, you know, we can change programs, uh, the material in the programs, fairly quickly. So if an employer would come to me and say, hey, listen, what you're doing is great, but you know what, I really need this. Yeah. Okay, tell me what you need and we'll stick it, we'll get it into something. Uh, even if we have to create a new class for it or something because we're really at the at the end of the day we're here to get our students into your into your your business to work for you right uh, and if I can change my program to make that better for you then that's better for my students now that's fantastic now do you do you have the rates of the, the students that are graduating and that are able to get into uh, the tech companies one of the things that we don't do really well as a community college and i think this is just a community college thing is that we don't have a really good tracking system uh, for for that you know when you talk about four-year schools yeah. you know everybody is you know everybody's got their um, their you know their four-year college and that's what they always that's what they talk about uh, but when it comes to a two-year school there's not a lot of talk going on there so we yeah. have a hard time tracking them uh, but we do have a lot of students coming back to us and telling us, yeah, I'm in this program, and some of my students are doing absolutely fantastic things. That's great to hear. Now, what, what typically happens, I mean, when they do the, the two years um, at Manchester Community College, they, they can then yeah. transfer the, uh, the credits that they have yes. and, and go and get a bachelor's, Yeah, correct? we have articulation agreements with several different schools. So the student will come into us, they'll get their degree with us, and then move on to a four-year college. Or what we see a lot is they'll go out, get a job someplace, and then that business, that company will pay, or at least some of the, the tuition costs. Yeah. Uh, so that's a big help for students to get at least a piece of that paid for. Yeah, I know tuition reimbursement is, is, is a huge piece, um, which is so important for people to go back and finish yes. like their, their degrees. Uh, I definitely wish more companies uh, offer that. Uh, if you don't, definitely start looking into that or mm. teaming up somehow with uh, Manchester Community College. Um, the other piece that we also need to talk about is, is cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. um, we are now more digital than ever. Yes. And, and because of that, we are now more vulnerable mm -hmm. than ever. There's a huge increase in cybersecurity attacks. What do we do? I mean, it's like almost 50% increase per week. Yeah. Small businesses and mid-sized businesses seem to get hit harder. And I think I've also seen statistics that shows places like right here, Hudson, New Hampshire, the smaller towns that might not be really as tech savvy or just have the robust IT security that is needed are also victims. So let's talk about the cybersecurity world and why you know students should really jump into this sector because it's the demand yeah. for cybersecurity experts is increasing daily yes and cyber is huge uh, there's a lot there's a lot of different fields that you can go into so a lot of my cyber students wind up working security in an IT shop which is great um, and we we teach our, our program has a couple of unique things in there in fact I was just talking to the college president this morning about how we do this uh, our program the first thing you do is you take an A plus exam now A plus is a CompTIA certification Worldwide, everybody knows that. When I was hiring people, if you didn't have an A-plus certification or some kind of CompTIA certification, I didn't even bother with your resume because that's really, those people test, and I know that if you have one of those certifications, you know your stuff. Right. So we teach, and 
uh, A plus, we teach network plus, and we teach security plus. And our final exam is the certification exam. So the students take the certification exam as part of the, of the class. So if they can get those certifications, that's a huge step forward for them. So you know, we've got that piece. So we teach them how this all works. Because in cybersecurity, if uh, you don't really know how, the, how things work, you might come up to me and say, hey, listen, somebody's broken into your system. And I'll say, great, how did they get in? Well, gee, I don't know. <laughs> what did they take? Well, gee, I don't know. Yeah. So we teach them all of those things. So, they, so we give them a really strong base to work off of. If they want to go into business and do cybersecurity business, they want to do investigations, uh, we teach them how to do forensics work so they can go in and really look deeply into devices. Uh, we teach them how to do uh, mobile tracking so that you can track devices. We teach them the security stuff and we bring them right up to network intrusions. So if they want to do investigations, they can do that. If they want to, do, if they want to work for a big corporate um, security group, they could do that. Yeah. No, it's, it's just such a fascinating industry, and it's, it, it's, it's scary, right? The stats mm -hmm. are absolutely scary, and I think there's a big push with a lot of companies to really try to hone in on how they can better protect yes. uh, their data and also better protect their employees that are working um, remotely. Uh, now, is, I think this is one area as well where uh, you mentioned that you, you have uh, conferences on, on cybersecurity at the yes. college. Yep. So what, what's going on? What, what happens at the conferences? What's the, what's the topic of discussion? <laughs> uh, technically, it's cybersecurity. Uh, companies will come in and from all over the world, really, uh, and come in and give talks about uh, their product in, in cybersecurity, how they work in cybersecurity. Uh, we have business who come right onto campus and will set up uh, uh, like a table or a booth there with, with their information there and they'll give talks. We have businesses coming in. And this happens in the spring every year and it's a three-day conference, usually Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, it's all about cybersecurity. Yeah. And like I said, there's a lot that's going on. Uh, as I mentioned, um, from a Forbes.com article that I was reading, mm -hmm. It said 93% of companies, 93% cyber criminals can penetrate. Yes. Now, I mean, that's, There's that's no, no question. So what, what can be done uh, to, to better <laughs> protect? You need, you need to educate your workforce. Yeah. So there's so many systems out there where people are just, they, they don't know enough about what's going on. Uh, and there's just so many cases. The, there was just a, um, I think, I believe it was a municipal uh, um, uh, city or something down in North Carolina where they had gotten broken into, but they didn't get broken into. It was one of the vendors that got broken into. So because they trusted the vendor to come in, and probably in this building, uh, there's an air conditioning system that maybe an offsite vendor will uh, attach to and, and, and work with. Well, you may be secure here, but is your air conditioning vendor secure? Have they taken care of all of their uh, passwords and, and whatnot? Yeah. Um, third, uh, you know, the encryption that we're using, the authentication that we're using, all that is now getting better and better, and we really need to be using all of that. If you're just using passwords to get into your system, it's probably not enough. Right. Especially where you have a remote workforce, people who are... Eat, well, yeah. you know, the, the most secure computer in the world is one that's turned off. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> as soon as you connect up to the internet for something, anything, yeah. just to go out, or if you have a website, uh, whatever it is, your mail servers, uh, you've just opened the door. Yeah. And, you know, companies will come in and they'll say, well, listen, we need you to do X, Y, and Z, do these things so that we can... Uh, access your system or because you're running our software and that software needs to go out and get updates. Well, people don't question that. Exactly. They just say, oh, okay, that's what you want and sure, here it is. And maybe half of that they really don't need, but you're just opening yourself up to vulnerability. Yeah, and I think there's also an increase in the, the, the phishing, the email. Oh, um, yes. the, yep. Those are, I think are, are huge. Yes. Uh, that's how a lot of people get hit because yep. Uh, some cyber criminals are, are quite, they're experts, right? Oh, they are. They're really <laughs> good at it. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's yeah. their nine-to-five job, you know. <laughs> so if you get an email on Thursday or Friday from your boss, uh, from the president of the company, from somebody, uh, 
high up in the, in the chain who says, listen, I'm at a conference and I need you to buy gift cards to, we're, we, I, we just signed a deal, I can't get anybody else to do this, we need you to, set, to transfer money, and it usually happens on a Thursday or a Friday. Uh, quick, get this done, and we'll take care of all the paperwork on Monday when I come back. Well, Monday is too late, Be and the reason they do this on Thursday or Friday is because the yeah. banks now have, have had time to do all of the transfers. 48 yeah. hours, it's gone, the money's gone. Uh, and people will respond to that. Because it looks legit. It looks legit because yeah. they've got the, the boss's name, they've got his phone number, they've got his email address, they've got everything. So it looks good. It's just fake. Right. And, and then the other, I think the other thing that we've seen an increase off is they will hold your data hostage. Yes. Yeah. And then you have to pay up. Yeah, either you pay up or, in some states it's not legal to pay up, but either you pay up or you don't get it back. Right. Uh, and it's a business for them. So some of them will give it back and... Some clearly won't. Right. It's a, you, you bring up a good point. It's a multi-million dollar business. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are making yeah. a lot of money. Some of these guys have help desks. Right. No. <laughs> yeah, that's how bad it is. Yeah. So are, are students who are coming in who, who are going into cybersecurity, are they, you know, you, you mentioned that, you know, they pretty much get an overview of everything. Are yes. they learning about the phishing and the ransomware yes. and yep. the malware and all that? Yeah, we do. We have classes on all of that. Uh, so that's we're fantastic. teaching them all of those things. And you know, that one industry is one that people forget about, and, and that's that company that comes in after you've been, um, after all of your data's been stolen, and they try to help you negotiate to get it back. That's a whole industry in cybersecurity right. in itself. Right, yeah, I, I, compliance is, is, that's is another, another yeah. thing. And yeah. is that part of the coursework as well? We, we bring our students up to that point, but we don't go into a lot of the compliance stuff. Uh, because it, it varies by, by industry. Right, right, because then when you start looking at like the, the privacy laws and, yes, and all yeah. that stuff, that's like a whole that's, uh, Yeah, that's a industry. whole different thing yeah. there, yeah. But I think it's, it's enough what they're getting into in terms of the, yeah. the cyber security yeah. uh, that they can go out there into a tech company and, and be really helpful to an oh, organization, yeah. yes. especially in, in IT. Uh, one thing that I also looked at from the Bureau of Lab Labor Statistics is that uh, there's going to be a 33% growth. Um, this was between 2020 and 2030 in mm -hmm. demands for cybersecurity experts. Yeah. Uh, the, and as we mentioned, you know, 5G is coming out. Uh, that's going to change things dramatically. Because everything's going to be connected. So once we start moving, cars are going to be talking to cars. And so if cars can talk to cars and cars yeah. can talk to my cell phone, then all of that can be hacked and there's all data there. So that's, that, that's a whole nother industry that we, don't, we can't even teach yet because right. it's, it hasn't been invented yet. So those jobs are going to be there. And those are jobs that we're not even counting yet. Right. No. So what's next at Manchester Community College? I know you're always vamping up uh, the curriculum. Yeah. Are you in the works of anything new that this, we should know about? Yeah, this summer uh, we're doing a couple of things. We're moving all of our uh, computers in the classrooms to virtual desktops, which is not, that's not new technology, but we're, we're moving everything. We've been doing it really slowly over the last five or six years, but we're moving all of them over uh, this summer. We're also doing something that's, uh, I like shiny objects. <laughs> um, and this is really the, the ultimate shiny object. We're changing out the lights in one of the classrooms so that the lights will actually be transmitting the data to the computers. So instead of using Wi-Fi in the classroom, we're going to be using, this is called Li-Fi, L-I-F-I. So we're going to be using light to transmit data. This is fast, it's ultra secure. Uh, and again, this is something we want our students to be using. Right. You know, uh, think about if you wanted a really secure environment, uh, with Wi-Fi, it's almost impossible. Somebody can see that signal. If I can see the signal, I can maybe hack into it. But if it's light and I just shut the blinds, close the doors, you can't see the light, you can't see the light, there's no data. Right. That's fascinating. And have you seen an increase in, in students that are coming in and that are kind of gravitating towards uh, the computer science uh, courses? Uh, we, we have a, our computer science courses have been, they've been increasing a couple of percentages a year, uh, even with the downturn um, in other, um, in other, you know, in all the areas, you know, as, uh, uh, you know, as the unemployment rate uh, 
falls, mm -hmm. there's less people in community colleges. When, they, when that rate goes up, there's more people in community colleges. So as that rate has gone down and there's more jobs available, a lot of, yeah. um, a lot of the, the, um, the students go out and, go and start working. But even there, our numbers have gone up. In cybersecurity, it's, it's like double digit. Yeah, I, I can definitely see that. So what's the message, uh, you know, to especially, you know, small towns like Hudson and just in the state of New Hampshire in general? Like, how do we, how do we get more of the focus on us really, you know, just being more tech savvy and, and just kind of moving forward with trying to be like other states like California and Seattle and Texas that are really booming mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to technology? How, how can we become that next tech hub in the country? Well, I think it starts with our kids. Um, you know, we need to teach the kids how to, our students, the young students, I'm talking about middle school, high school students, uh, about the technology uh, and get them involved with that technology. You know, we're doing two summer camps up, in, up on the college uh, with high school kids this, this summer, uh, and that's going to bring them into technology. And some of the things that they're asking for is the tech stuff. Yeah. So we will, you know, we're, we're doing at least part of that, uh, and we're always looking for something else to do to bring the younger students up onto campus so they can see what's going on in the technology yeah. fields. So that's where it starts. I think we have to train the students first. Um, you know, we have to bring the tech businesses into the, you know, into the state and want them to stay. And you know, the way we do that is by having students here who, who can do it. Right. No, I think that's the, the biggest thing is we, we want to make sure that we're bringing those tech companies here, uh, making sure that they stay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think also the, the, the biggest thing is that education yeah. piece. Um, I think for the longest, uh, you know, for me, you know, when, when I looked at technology, I thought, oh my God, this is like so difficult to understand. You gotta be a total nerd. Uh, but then there's so many fascinating uh, elements uh, to technology yeah. and I think cybersecurity. There's so many, so many ways to go. Yeah. There's so many different things that you can do today in technology. Uh, it, it's just amazing. Everything we touch is, is technology oriented. Yeah, it is. Every, yeah, cell phones. Uh, yeah. The Amazon, uh, yeah. all the various Amazon tools, Alexa, yeah. the robots, yeah. there, there's so yeah, much I mean, going cars on. Cars can park themselves. Yeah. And, you know, uh, I need that all, car. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, so I, I spoke to you earlier. I, there's actually, if I can find my notes here, there are two classes that you offer there that mm -hmm. I, I actually, when I looked at the curriculum, I think they're fascinating, especially right now where there is a, a tech startup boom mm -hmm. uh, that's going on. One of the, uh, so one of the classes that we talked about was entrepreneurship and computer science. And mm -hmm. one of the things that you learn is about, you know, starting your own tech company and, yeah. and what's required of that. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit, you know, before we yeah. close about that? The entrepreneurship class talks to our students about how to set something up, how to set up a business. And a lot of people will come in with the thought that, oh, I can just write software right. and stick it out somewhere and on, on you know, the Play Store or something, and people will buy it and that's my business. Well, there's a lot more to it than that. And that's one of the things that we try to teach our students. Yeah. You know, if you want to just, if you want to just build it, nobody's going to come. Uh, there was a store, I won't say which store, but there was a store that uh, it used to be a fireworks store. And they sold out. Um, somebody else bought the building and they changed the name. But I had no idea what they sold. Yeah. Well, if you don't tell me what you sell, I'm not coming in. So you need to tell people what, what it is you're doing. And, yeah. and that's where uh, a lot of students, it's that marketing piece yeah. that they miss. And then there's the finance piece. Where do I get my money from? Exactly. You know? And what about the legal stuff? Who's going to take care of that? One person really can't do all of that. You really need a team. Yeah. And that's one of the things that we stress in that class. I think that's fantastic that you have that class. Being a new tech startup founder myself, uh, when I saw that on the list, I was like, oh my God, yes, they need this. Because I'm learning hands-on mm -hmm. um, about you know, building an app, creating an app, managing teams. You know, do, do I outsource? Do I work with teams internally here in, in, in the United States? Or is it cheaper for me to outsource? So there's still elements. Where I'm lucky is because I have the legal degree, so mm -hmm. you know I, I'm still licensed. Thank goodness I get my license active. Um, so yeah, the legal aspect of it, you know, it would be a little bit easier for me. But there's still things that I need to learn about, like IP. You know, mm -hmm. I got to protect yes. my source code. You know, I got to make sure I copyright trademark issues. Um, so right. Right. it's it's phenomenal that you have that class because mm -hmm. I do see an increase. Uh, with tech startups, and there's a demand for tech startups. I mean, they're getting funding like. 
millions of dollars are, are being funded. So yes. that's phenomenal that you right. have that And that's available. another piece too, you know, where do you get the money? And exactly. how do you do that? Who, who do you go to? Yeah, and I'm learning all that. Uh, kudos to uh, the New Hampshire Small Business Association mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I am working with them. I do have a small business advisor. So yeah. if you are thinking about you know starting your own tech company, definitely look into that. Yeah. Another resource for me is the uh, New Hampshire Tech Alliance. Yeah. So shout out to them for yeah. that. So. Yeah, and both of those uh, New Hampshire Tech Alliance. I you know I really wish that we were more involved with them, um, and the um, you know the Small Business Association. That they are absolutely fantastic for small business getting getting started. Yeah. So Stephanie and Julie at the New Hampshire Tech Alliance. Make sure you get <laughs> with Manchester Community yes. College. Is it, it? I think now more than ever, yeah. it is imperative for collaborations. Yeah. And we haven't been talking to the New Hampshire Tech Alliance uh, when it comes to the apprenticeship program, and they're, we're getting them involved in that as well. That's, that's fantastic, yeah, they're, they're really great over there. Yeah. Um, I'm actually gonna be having them uh, on the show oh, uh, in sometime in June, so look forward to that. So in closing, I mean, what, what, what else should we know about Manchester Community College that you think, oh my God, I forgot to really mention this, and you really wanna stress, on the importance of Manchester's, Manchester Community College and educating mm -hmm. our students when it comes to uh, technology. Well, you know, it's a great place to be, and Manchester Community College is, uh, a couple of years ago, somebody decided, well, let's take the word community out of the school's names, and we, we didn't like that idea very much, because we are a community. Yeah. You know, for, uh, for my department, if, as long as you're coming to the door, we're there for you, you know, you're, you're part, of, part of the group. Uh, you're part of our family. We want to see you succeed. So it's a really great place to come for that. Uh, it's also a really great place to come before you go to that four-year school. Yeah. You know, four-year schools are a lot of money. Um, and it w wouldn't it be great if I can get rid of two, two or three years of schooling before I go to that four-year college? That's a lot more money. So you can come to Manchester and you get an associate's degree there and transfer that. You can just even come and just take gen eds and transfer those classes to a four-year program. So it really is a great place to come to uh, if you're looking to save some money yeah. and get, still get a quality education. You know, we do some really great stuff there at, uh, at the college for as far as that stuff goes. And if you don't know what you want to do, you know, uh, one of the first programs in the cybersecurity class uh, program that we uh, teach is literally a week about everything. So once you've taken that class, if you've decided, well, gee, you know what, this isn't one I thought, I don't really like this, then we'll find something else for you. Yeah, you that's know? a beautiful, there, there's so much uh, available, so many different programs yeah. and courses. Um, so, well, I thank you so much for uh, coming today. Well, thank you for having um, me. I, I think the courses that are available on the curriculum is really fantastic. And I definitely agree with you that we definitely need to implement uh, more lessons um, mm -hmm. early on yeah. uh, for, for technology because it's not going anywhere, Yeah, right? No. <laughs> yeah. And if you're interested in learning more about the program, I'm there all summer. Yeah. Uh, there's usually somebody on campus four or five days a week, uh, even during the summer. So uh, stop in and visit. We have classrooms that are completely different. And I think you've probably seen some in the, in the video that yes. we had. Uh, we've gotten rid of the rows that's gone. There's, uh, it's more of a, an informal classroom. Yeah. Uh, so students are really comfortable there, so it's a great place to, uh, to learn. Uh, but as I said, we're there all summer, so stop in and visit. Yeah, and if you want to pivot, because I've seen a lot of people who pivot from one career to another. Mm -hmm. um, I, like I said, I get people who ask me all yeah. the time, hey, I'm doing law or I'm, I'm, I'm doing nursing, but I don't want to do that anymore, and I want to pivot into tech. Yeah. That's a great place yeah. to start. And we have a lot of students that come in as a, uh, this is their second, uh, second career or third career. They're transferring over. Uh, you mentioned uh, on our video, there's a, there's a woman there who used to own a, um, a cleaning company who's now in cybersecurity. Yeah, I saw that video. Yeah. yeah. And she loves it. So. Oh, she does, yeah. Yeah. And the demand is going to be there. Yes. Uh, the predictions actually see the demand for more people in the cybersecurity sector increasing. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a great time to be in tech. Yes. If you don't know what to do right now and you're looking for a career change, uh, then I highly recommend uh, that you start looking into technology. Uh, first, figure out, because tech is so big, you just mm. got to <laughs> figure out what you want to <laughs> right, do. Right, figure out what you yeah. want to do, uh, and then take a look at Manchester Community uh, College and see what they and, have to and offer. And we can help them figure that piece out, yeah. too. 
you know, people, students will come to us and they're not really sure what they want to do. Well, we'll sit down and we'll talk. Uh, we'll, maybe, you know, what you came in to talk about wasn't exactly where you wind up. Yeah, that's a good place. So, well, I really appreciate you stopping by the studio today and having a wonderful chat about cybersecurity and cloud services and the computer science program. Uh, you're welcome to come back anytime. We may have more stuff to talk about this fall. Oh, listen, I'm welcome to it. We have, we have some it. new and exciting things that are going to happen on campus. Okay, well, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, unless Oprah sees me <laughs> and uh, offers me a talk show, I'll still be here. <laughs> well, can I come and talk to you? With, with, yeah, you okay. can still come talk okay. to me when I'm Oprah. I'm, okay. I'm mini All Oprah. Right. So, yeah, we'll see you. Yeah, come back. Definitely okay. come yeah. back. Let's talk more. I'm monitoring this sector. I'm quite interested in what's going on with cybersecurity and cloud services. So you're more than welcome to come back. And for everybody else, thank you for joining us for another episode of Get Tech Smart. Stay tuned for more episodes. I'm actually back in the studio this Wednesday and another fantastic guest. So thank you for joining us today.